Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be talking about some books people recommended me on TikTok. Baby, baby. If you didn't know, I have a book talk account. My link is always down below or my channel account name is always linked down below for you. I mainly make recommendation videos and list videos. I'm slowly trying to start making like review, mini review videos, but we'll see if that sticks. <laughs> But um, I get, since I make a lot of recommendation videos, I get a lot of comments in those videos recommending me books for specific tropes because I do books for specific tropes. Like I have uh, my Romances with Disability Rep video, I have a, an age gap, many age gap videos, um, things like that. Many of the comments in those videos are people recommending me books that are in that specific trope that I have not heard about. So that's what this video is going to be. I'm going to tell you about the books that my followers on TikTok have commented on my TikTok videos that I have never heard about before. And maybe you have it either. I obviously have gotten way more recs than what is in this video, but these are the ones that I have never heard about before ever. The ones that people have recommended to me, I've already heard about and I know a lot about, or um, I've already read. So those have like already been on my Goodreads, you know, none of these are on my Goodreads shelves at the moment. Um, we're gonna look them up and we're gonna see what they're all about. So let's get started. So for my Alien Romance Rex, someone commented uh, the Torians series by MK, I don't know how to pronounce this last name, Idem, Idem. I'm so sorry if I'm butchering that. I looked this one up and the first book is called Grimm. So it looks like we have the common trope amongst alien romance books where um, the alien species, the women are dying out and they need to find more women to repopulate. And so that's what our hero has been tasked to do. Um, the emperor has tasked him to go find women for their planet to repopulate with or else their species will die out. So our heroine in here, Lisa, she is a single mother and a widow. Her husband ended up dying from cancer a couple years ago. The reason why she gets abducted or how she gets abducted is that she is alone at her husband's gravesite and she ends up waking up on a ship. So someone abducts her when she's alone in the graveyard. She's super upset about this because she has two little girls at home, like her children are at home and she is yelling at these aliens like take me back home i need to see my daughters i need to be with my daughters somehow grim ends up finding her and getting on this ship and he ends up agreeing and accepting to help her and take her to her children but the only catch is she has to agree to join with him which i think is like marriage in their alien customs whatever um and so he's like I will take you to your children and we can take your children with us, but you basically have to marry me to do so. She realizes this is the only way she can go home to her children and get her children and make sure her children are safe. So she agrees to this. And apparently the Torian empire changes forever after that point. That sounds really good. I'm gonna see if all of these are on Kindle Unlimited later. And I'll try to remember to put in the description of the video, which books are available off of Kindle Unlimited. We then have one book someone recommended me that was in my Romances with Chronic Illness representation. Someone recommended the Man in Charge series by Laura Lynn Page. Someone said that the heroine in here has POTS, which is my chronic illness. So I'm really excited about this. So I was a little confused with the series because it says it's a duet, but there's also a 0.5 and I think like a 1.5 as well. Um, I'll read the summary for uh, number one, but 0.5, like the prequel, I guess, was written before book number one. So I think I'll start with the prequel book. So this book series, I guess, centers around the Sebastians and they own the whole city. I don't know what city it is. <laughs> um, and they technically also own the world. I guess their company is so big that they own a large chunk of the world. Our heroine in here, she really wants to have her own part of the world and she wants to find out some information about the Sebastians, I think. And so I think she works for the company and her boss ends up going away to find herself. And through her boss doing that, she ends up coming into uh, the Sebastian's limelight and world basically but she realizes she doesn't fit in this world like at all but then she comes face to face with a man named scott sebastian who is the arrogant playboy heir with the mind of a devil and the body of a god and a mouth she can't stop thinking about apparently they have a huge attraction to one another they both want one another but she knows that if he like figures out who she really is he could expose her to everybody and realize that she's a fraud um and so i wonder how that will all happen and what that means. Um, it doesn't say anything about pots in the summary. So we'll see, we'll see if the uh, 
representation holds up in this one. So now I have a bunch of books that were commented on my romance books with disability representation. I love that there are so many comments. The majority of the comments are from this video specifically. I made two parts actually, so both of the videos and the age gap recs, of course. Um, so there's a large chunk of books, a part of disability rep. So let's see what we're gonna maybe read one day. Someone commented Dangerous to Know and Love by Jane Harvey Barrick. They said that one of the characters in here is deaf. So this is, I think a new adult romance because the hero in here, Daniel is 19 and he is the moody, dark boy that a lot of girls are interested in. Daniel lives with his older brother, Zeph, and their home is notoriously known as being the party house. He then ends up meeting Lisa Ann. I think that's how you pronounce that. Lisa Ann McLean. And they have to work on a school project together. So yes, it's in college. It says that this is a college romance. So they're in a same college class together. Lisa Ann is very much known as a good girl, goody two shoes kind of girl. But when she meets Daniel, she's really intrigued by him and she wants to know more about him. But Daniel likes to keep people at arm's length because of a secret that he has, which someone commented and asked if the secret was the fact that he was deaf because the person who commented like the book's title on my uh, video basically said like, oh, here's the book, it has deaf rep in here, but the summary never says it has deaf, deaf rep, it just says he has this secret. So um, apparently his secret is that he's deaf. Sorry if I spoiled that, but like, I don't think that's that big of a secret, I guess. I don't know, I'd have to read it to figure it out. I guess people don't know that he's deaf and that's it's a secret that he's deaf. I don't know. That sounds really good though. And I love books with disability rep, of course. Someone commented the book Redeemed by Lauren Asher. They said that one of the characters in here is an amputee. This is about Santiago and Chloe. I think this was the one that someone said it was a race car driver. We'll see. Um, it might be another one of these books. I don't know. But it says that he has a big career and he is an eligible bachelor, but then something happens to where he becomes a monster, um, which I assume means he gets in a wreck and he becomes an amputee. I think that's what the comment told me. Uh, and then he goes and hides from the world. Then Chloe comes in and she basically breaks into his house and uh, she becomes his fake new girlfriend to fix his problem. I don't know what problem that means, but through them fake dating there, his feelings for her start to form in a romantic sense. Oh, this book takes place in Italy. Okay, okay, okay. So Chloe, she um, ends up in Italy one night trying to find her long lost father, but she ends up becoming the fake boyfriend of a guy she doesn't want instead. <laughs> but then she also starts to fall for Santiago through all of this. Next is Feel Me by Cece Robson. The person who commented told me that this book has hard of hearing representation. This book I think takes place in Philadelphia and Declan is a part of the elite, a part of uh, Philadelphia. And he has become the assistant district attorney. He has won a bunch of cases, some impossible cases, but then he becomes furious when he is assigned one case that he doesn't want at all. Melissa is the other main character of this book and she was born hearing impaired to a very neglectful mother. She ends up finding solace when she is adopted by an attorney who just so happens to be Declan's new boss. She is the current director of victim services and she is really mad when Declan is placed in the main unit that she overseas. They apparently had a horrible first encounter with, an, with one another and neither of them can get over it. <laughs> Declan has never been able to get Melissa out of his mind and through them working together, uh, Melissa starts to fall for Declan and they end up having a romance, I guess. So I guess this is pretty forbidden because she is his boss's daughter. Um, so we'll see how that all plays out. But um, I'm very interested to um, learn more about Melissa and I think she probably faced some trauma because of what she went through, but that's really cool that she got adopted um, and she like has some solace, you know? Um, and so we'll see what I think of this one. This does sound pretty cute and cool. Next, someone commented Priceless by Linda Cage. The commenter said that this book has CP in this book, which is cerebral palsy. The hero in this book's name is Brant and the heroine in here is Sarah. Sarah has cerebral palsy. I believe this is a friend to lovers romance. Sarah and Brant are very close and they basically need each other to survive in life. So Brant has never been able to put Sarah in a more than friendship zone um, because he has this big secret like she is his most important person in the world and he doesn't want to end up losing her other people have crudely thought that the reason why they're not together in a romantic sense is because she has cerebral palsy and he 
hate that people think that because that is not true. He has his own crap he's going through and he doesn't want to push that on her. But then one day, Sarah comes up to him and asks him to take her V card. <laughs> um, so then I guess everything spirals after that. Uh, this is a uh, new adult romance, I think. I think this maybe takes place in college, we'll see. Um, but that sounded pretty funny though. <laughs> I think it's always really funny when someone like tells somebody, hey, I want you to take my V card. I don't know why I would, I could never, ever, ever muster up enough courage to do that, so props to them. <laughs> Next I have Unsteady in Love by Harlow Lane. Uh, the commenter of this one said that the someone of the characters is an amputee. Okay, so this is a second chance romance. So four years ago, our hero and heroine were boyfriend and girlfriend they were dating. She thought that this man was going to be the man that she married, had kids with, supposed to spend the rest of her life with. But then out of the blue one day, his phone gets disconnected and she learns that he joined the military and never told her. So it is four years later, he obviously shattered her heart and you can't understand, doesn't know what happened. Then at the beginning of this book, I guess, he ends up on her doorstep begging for forgiveness and to marry her. <laughs> the hero now apparently is way different than how he used to be because of what he went through in the military. And she's just trying to get over the hurt and heartbreak that he caused her all those years ago. She basically has to come to terms with him being back and whether or not she wants to give him a second chance or not. Next I have Read My Lips by Daryl Banner. The commenter of this one said that there was deaf rap in this book. Ooh, okay. This takes place in Texas. I love that. I think the heroine in here, uh, she lived in New York and then she moves to a small town in Texas to go to college to find herself, but she did not end up expecting to meet the hero of this book. He is dark and tatted, muscular, broody, and she ends up forming a huge obsession obsession of him. And I guess they, they end up falling for one another. She learns that um, he is voiceless, uh, which I assume means that he's deaf. Um, that's what the commenter said on here. So these two end up falling for one another. This seems like kind of like an epic romance story. It says that it's very angsty. Um, it's full of steamy time. So um, I really want to pick this one up as soon as possible. Next is Lock by Harper Sloan. Someone commented saying that there is an amputee in this book. So I think our hero, he ends up being in an accident that causes him or has him become an amputee of some sort. And ever since then, he has been trying to keep everybody in his life at arm's length. He doesn't want to bring people into the darkness he is facing and the horrible thoughts he is feeling because of what he went through. He then ends up meeting this girl who won't take no for an answer basically and has basically pushed herself into staying in his life and they end up falling for one another. It says that this is the final book in a series, so I think I might have to read the previous ones before this. So yeah. Someone commented on one of my, I think my February wrap up TikTok and they said in like all caps, you need to read this book. I want you to read this book. So here we go. That's the only recommendation I got off of this video. <laughs> And it is called Lords of Pain by Angel Lawson and Samantha Rue. Whoa, okay, this looks dark. Dang, this sounds like a Jen book. <laughs> I feel like Jen, Jen, whoa, I feel like, I don't know, this sounds like a lot like the beginning of that Sam Mariano book she talks about a lot, but the guys a part of this book, I think it's maybe reverse harem, I don't know, but it talks about three guys, Killian, Tristan, and Wrath. These three men were a part of our heroine's past. And in high school, they all knew about the heroine's secrets and the heroine knew about their secrets. Um, but they had power in the school and she did not. But then one night, the stepbrother and his two, her stepbrother and his two friends end up taking their rage out on the heroine. After that night, she ended up running away and never planning to come back. Then it's three years later and she's standing on her stepbrother's doorstep. She's now on the run from somebody else and she basically asks for solace in their house. I think this is maybe a, a reverse harem. Yeah, this is a reverse harem. That sounded pretty dark at the beginning of this um, <laughs> summary, um, but it sounds like all three of them now just like all want her and they're gonna protect her from this evil Thing that is coming after her now. So I don't know, this sounded like a Jen book to me. Jen, if you're watching this, maybe check this book out. <laughs> First Siblings Best Friend Romance, someone recommended Chasing Red by, what's the author's name? The author's name is Kelsey Cheyenne. The heroine her whole life has wanted to get into medical school, but then once like college hits, she feels like her heart's being ripped into either follow her dreams or follow her heart. This is all because of Chased 
Westbrook. That's her brother's best friend and she thinks he is absolutely perfect. He has apparently been chasing her for a while. He is very persistent. He wants her, but she has these dreams and aspirations to go to medical school, which is in a different place and a different area than where Chase is. But apparently Chase is just gonna keep fighting for this woman. Hopefully he's not too persistent. I don't like too persistent pushy heroes in here, um, but hopefully this turns out to be really good. Next, we have another large chunk of Rex. This is the age gap Rex section. <laughs> Someone recommended to burn in brutal rapture by Nyla Kay. Okay, so um, I think this is about a our heroine who ends up meeting Lazarus. Um, who is the hero in here, who is her dad's business partner and best friend. She ends up having these confusing feelings about him. And then she ends up seeing Lazarus in a completely different way, a romantic way, which complicates things, obviously. Lazarus has this very painful, traumatic life, and he is very unprepared when he ends up falling for Tracian, I think that's how you pronounce her name, who is his best friend's daughter. But Tracy won't take no for an answer. She is putting everything on the line to try to be with him. He ends up reluctantly falling for her, I guess. The, I don't know what, but like the dad's best friend, like age gap thing, like that whole thing, I don't know, it seems so taboo to me. <laughs> like you fall for your dad's best friend, like, honey, like you do you. <laughs> But that seems so taboo to me. <laughs> Another age gap one is Cherry Bomb by Carmel Rhodes. This short, this, this summary is quite short. Um, it just talks about how um, the heroine, when she was 16, she caught her um, boyfriend with her sister. Um, and this takes place uh, years later. And maybe it's second chance, who knows? I don't know what's going on, but that, this, this summary is literally, that's all it says, so. Another age gap one is A Place Without You by Jewel E. Ann. I've heard a lot of good things about Jewel E. Ann, but I've never heard about this book. This is about Henna and Bodhi. They end up meeting at a music festival. They end up having an amazing time together. It's very spontaneous, lustful, and fun, and they end up falling very fast for one another. But then Bodhi ends up leaving without saying goodbye, and Hannah thinks that she will never get over him. But then she meets Mr. Malone, who is her new guidance counselor, who I guess is the same person as Bodhi. And then their secret is discovered, and Hannah must choose between finishing school banned from seeing Mr. Malone or dropping out to follow her nomad dreams. So uh, very forbidden. Obviously that's her school counselor, so. Another age gap is Dreams of 18 by Saffron A. Kent, another author that I've heard a lot about, but again, I have never heard about this book. Apparently Violet, the heroine in here, is in love with a man who hates her. On her 18th birthday, she ended up throwing herself at him, which caused a huge scandal in their town. Now everyone thinks that she's basically like a tramp and he has essentially disappeared. There's a rumor going around that he's moved up to the mountains in Colorado and Violet takes it upon herself to fix the whole situation and she goes up to find him. This is your best friend dad uh, trope. He has to like forgive her, I guess, or something happens where they go um, stay in a cabin in the mountains, I guess. So we'll see. We'll see if this one's good. <laughs> Another age gap is Perfect Storm by Erica Marcellus. This is a babysitting job romance. Our heroine is apparently the babysitter for the Goodwin family, and she ends up falling for the dad, Mr. Goodwin. His marriage is apparently falling apart. And when it ended, she was the one who helped him put back the pieces of his broken heart. But now his ex-wife starts coming back into the picture or coming back into his life. They don't want her to ruin what they have, but apparently the heroine has a huge secret that she doesn't expect. I love the cover of this one. I just, I love it. I love the cover of this one. I think it is so pretty. I kind of like nanny-ish romances, so we'll see. I'm kind of hesitant because he was like married when she knew him and everything. It kind of reminds me of The Babysitter by Jack Carbon in that sense, if you read that book. Um, so maybe this will be as good as that one. Another age gap is Hide and Seek by Leila Frost. Piper is the owner of a very thriving dessert business and she is busy all of the time. Jack Hyde is a workaholic with a jaded outlook on life and he works in a car garage, I think like working on custom paint jobs or custom cars. And then these two end up being thrown together somehow. There's gonna be a motorcycle ride at some point because um, it says that she gets on the back of his Harley. So. Uh, this might be motorcycle romance. We will see. Okay, I took a little bit of a break. Sorry if the camera angle changed. Um, but next, we're going to be talking about another age gap romance, which is Burnout by Coralie June. This is a romance between a heroine and her brother's best friend who just happens to also be 
her teacher. She wants this man so badly, but he treats her completely differently than when he is uh, her teacher and then when he is at her brother's house. It's just a romance between the two of them, I guess. It doesn't really go into detail on here. Yeah, I guess if you want to read Brother's Best Friends as well, this one also fits into that trope. Another age gap romance is Burn by Maya Banks. I have read um, her one of her Highlander books and I loved it. So I've never heard about this book though. This book centers around three guys, Ash, Jace, and Gabe. They're three of the most powerful, wealthiest men in the country, and they are accustomed to getting everything that they want. Apparently in the first couple of books, I guess Jace and Gabe end up finding their own relationships, leaving Ash feeling re restless and unfulfilled. Then Ash meets Josie, who, who seems immune to his charms and his wealth. Intrigued, he begins a relentless pursuit, determined she won't be the, only, the one who got away. He never imagined the one woman to tell him no would be the only woman who'd ever drive him to the edge of desire. I love Maya Banks' writing style. I've only read one of her books, but I loved her writing style in that one, so hopefully I also love this one. The last age gap one is one by Vi Keeland called All Grown Up. I've heard a lot of good things about Vi Keeland. I have read one that she wrote with Penelope Ward and I somewhat enjoyed that one. I think this is an age gap romance where the woman is older. The heroine says that she falls for Ford, who just so happens to be younger than she expected. So our heroine's best friend ends up making a profile for her on a dating site. One that invited men ages 21 to 27 to apply for a date. And that's how she ended up meeting Ford. They start messaging, he made her laugh, but she was adamant because of his age, they could only be friends. After weeks of talking and him wearing her down, she finally agrees to go on one date with him. This is her first date in quite a long time, but she just can't say no to him and she's really curious about seeing him. When she sees him at the restaurant for the first time, she thinks that he looks so familiar and it turns out that he is the son of the neighbor at her family's summer home. So the boy next door in this case. So she knew him when he was a kid and he has completely changed, obviously. She ends up leaving the restaurant in a full blown like panic mode. Later on when it is summertime, they might end up reconnecting because they end up going to summer houses that are right next door to each other. That sounds like a recipe for a, a hilarious time that I'm very much looking forward to. For Hate to Love, I have a recommendation. It is called Bricks by Brooke O'Brien. The hero of the story is named Bricks and he is the lead singer of a band and he's used to one falling over themselves for a chance to tame this wild bad boy. Except for the heroine. I think they grew up together. He apparently always went out of his way to make her life a living hell. Apparently it is years later and their parents announced that they have eloped together. So like, like one of like, I think like maybe her mom or her dad ends up marrying one of his parents. Um, I guess they're divorced or single or whatever. And so then they have to live together and that is her stepbrother. And they end up having to live together alone. So there's a bunch of temptation in here. There's forced proximity because they live together and they despise one another. But then apparently things happen, sparks fly, they end up falling for one another very reluctantly. And then the last couple books were recommended on just my general steamy romance recommendations. First is Deviant by Callie Hart. This summary is fairly short, but this is about Sloan and Zeth. And Sloan um, has done some pretty bad things. And she has been trying to find her sister, Alexis. And she asks Zeth to help her find her sister, but he says that he can't and that Sloane wants him to be a hero in this instance, but he says that he can't and he's not a good man. Um, I don't know what that means, but that was a very short summary. Then we have Rain by Jessica Godziella. I've heard about this author from Heather from Hia Booktubes, so hopefully this is good. Heather loves Jessica Godziella. This summary is like two sentences long, so it says, Rain is no stranger to the criminal underbelly and hard life. But when a random woman comes literally crashing into his life, learning things she has no business of knowing and bringing with her the weight of the city's biggest skin trader, the hard life starts to take a whole new meaning. Um, I, again, have heard about Jessica Godziella before. I've never read one of her books, so we'll see how this one is. And lastly, I was recommended Leather and Lace by Samantha A. Cole. This is about our heroine who is trying to write a BDSM novel and she decides to get very hands-on with her inspiration. She ends up meeting Devin, who is an ex-Navy SEAL and a private club owner, who is all too happy to help her. They end up 
getting together for a weekend, but then it turns into something more. But apparently while they are trying to fight their connection with one another, a killer has Devin in their sights. Will they survive with their hearts and lives still intact? So I guess this has kind of like a suspense element to it. I'm not the biggest fan of romantic suspense, so I don't know if I'll get to this one in all honesty, but um, I like the idea of her getting her inspiration hands-on. I think that sounds really good. <laughs> Those were all recommendations given to me by commenters on TikTok. Please let me know down below if you have read any of these books, if you recommend one of them with all your heart's content, which book should I start first? Please let me know. I really wanna to get to mainly the ones with disability rep in them because as I've talked about before, it's very hard for me to find books that I have not read yet that have disability rep in them and all of those I have not heard about or even read yet. So I'm very excited for those. So there you have it. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.